Singapore authorities have seized a record haul of elephant ivory, together with pangolin scales, that's worth nearly 49 million U.S. dollars. Officials found almost 9,000 kilograms of elephant ivory. That's estimated to come from nearly 300 African elephants. And close to 12,000 kilograms of pangolin scales were seized. All these were found in a container from Congo uh, that was part of a shipment transiting through Singapore to Vietnam. It had been declared as timber. These scales come from the giant pangolin, which is native to Africa, and the species is considered vulnerable. The latest haul marks the third major seizure of pangolin scales in Singapore this year. Under the law, those who import or export wildlife illegally can be fined up to over $360,000 and jailed up to two years. Now, for more on this, Steve Galster joins us live from Bangkok. He's the director of Freeland, a leading environmental NGO. Thanks for joining us, uh, Steve. Firstly, authorities have just seized, as we mentioned, about 12 tons of pangolin scales, 9 tons of elephant ivory here in Singapore. Could you tell us more about the, the movement of such illegal animal parts? Well, they're treating them like futures commodities at this point. It's a gold rush. So you've got organized crime in Asia teaming up with organized crime in Africa to move stockpiles and also uh, newly uh, slaughtered animals from the continent of Africa over to Asia, uh, the, driving the price up. Some of it's going straight to market, but a lot of it's actually being stockpiled. Uh, traffickers are actually banking on the extinction of these animals, finite uh, commodity, and looking forward to making a lot of money on them in the future. You know, there's always been large-scale illegal wildlife trafficking from Africa to Southeast Asia and China. Question is, why or how does this region actually feature in this illicit trade? Southeast Asia has historically and still been a transit. So most of this trade is, is going to China. Uh, a lot of it transits Laos and Vietnam. And with Vietnam's economy improving, there's a lot more consumerism in Vietnam as well. There's also scattered consumption all across the region. Uh, but, you know, the good thing about this particular seizure is that the tip-off, the cooperation, came from Chinese customs. And I think that's the, the new positive news here is that Chinese, particularly the Customs Anti-Smuggling Bureau, has stepped up their game and wants to stop illegal imports of wildlife in general into their country. And what's driving this demand? A number of things are driving this demand. One is uh, medicine trade. Another one is ornaments. That's what the ivory is for. But also, as I mentioned, uh, these animals, the elephants, the pangolins, the rhinos, the tigers, they're being trafficked for their body parts, bones, tusks, uh, scales, etc. These are commodities that you can store for a long time. You can put them in a shed or a warehouse. And like I said, you can wait for the price to go up. So they're really, they're banking on extinction, but they're also banking on a future market. And that's a key point because if governments make a resolute stance on this and say, we are banning this trade in these body parts of these animals, not just now, not just for a few years, but forever, that will send a clear signal to these traffickers that they can't really bank on extinction here. This is a, a bad investment. So is banning the solution? What more can law enforcers do to actually stop this transboundary illegal trade? As you mentioned, they're, they're treating it like futures commodities. Yeah, I think banning is very important. But in the meantime, uh, what we need to see, first we have to look at why is this happening. Trafficking an endangered species is still much more rewarding than protecting these species. There's a lot of money being made on this. We all talk about how much it's around $20 billion or more a year made from endangered species trade. What we don't ask is, where's all that money? So what we need to be doing while we're doing demand reduction efforts, which might take a while, uh, is get these bans passed, the law is very permanent and strong, and get the enforcement agencies to go after the money, seize it, and put that money into recovery funds. So we need to essentially drain the fuel tanks of the wildlife traffickers and fill the tanks of the conservationists. Indeed, follow the money trail. Thank you so much. I'm Steve Gallister, Director of Freeland in Bangkok, speaking to us.